All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you really quickly how we can create a nice overlay. So that way, whenever we like, whenever we refresh, if I refresh, right, it's gonna show like a nice loading screen before it takes me to this page, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go ahead and install a library. Uh, let me just pull that up real quick. There should be a library called uh, React Spinners, okay? We're gonna install that, which is this one right over here. And this is going to allow us to pretty much create, uh, cre create a, well, we can not, not create, but we can use this to uh, display spinners and then we can use that to dis uh, to display like a loading screen, for example. So we're going to go ahead and install that real quick. So right up, I'm going to go into my text editor, go into the terminal, yarn add react spinners. Okay, cool. I think that's all we'll need to install. We'll go inside components, we'll create a file called spinner.tsx. And this, this uh, file, this this component is just gonna be a spinner component. Now the component itself, we're gonna use a style component for this. So what I'll do is I'll create a style component down here called overlay. And this overlay, component is just going to be a div that has a height of 100%, a width of 100%. Um, it's going to have uh, a display of flex and then justify content will be center. And so will align items be center. And it's going to have a position of absolute um i think actually i think it should be fixed actually because what if there's a possibility of scrolling uh i think it should be fixed instead and top zero left zero i think that should be fine okay so what we're doing is we're creating a full screen overlay so that way and it's also going to center uh any children all the way in the middle and because we want to center the spinner right so over here we will go ahead and do that uh, now we do need a background color, so we'll do a dark uh, color. And we'll add some opacity so we can, you know, see some stuff over it. So let's test this out. I'm going to go ahead and do this. I will add an overlay. Well, actually, not there. Let's do this. Uh, if loading, turn overlay. It's like that. And we should be able to see, let's see what's going on over here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try restarting the app and I think maybe that should uh maybe that should solve the issue cuz I didn't I don't know where that was coming from honestly. Okay, yeah, I think we should be fine. Okay, there we go. All right, so and that plus I didn't even do anything with the spinners yet. So, okay. Let's try now. Uh so if loading return overlay. Okay, so right now loading is obviously not it's not loading obviously. We could add a delay. So what we can do here is I can say okay, uh, set timeout, set loading. So we can update the state of loading with a delay. So we'll do 200 seconds, or, or I'm sorry, 200 seconds, two seconds. So you can see now if I visit this menu page, it's going to show this, right? That's because every single time, if, if I were to visit the, the route directly, it would show it would show that overlay. Obviously, if I click on this, it's pushing the route, which is not the same as directly visiting the route and making a request to the page that's completely different okay this is client-side navigation we're not performing any server-side navigation so that, that that's why it's not going to do the loading stuff okay uh but if i again if i were to visit a page directly it would show this overlay until loading is set to false so i'll do one second for that because it's i don't want it to be too long okay now with the spinner what we got to do is we literally just got to put a spinner here and I sh it should not be overlay that uh that i'm rendering it should be spinner okay and what i'm gonna do with the spinner is i'm gonna type annotate this to be an fc which is short for function component and that's going to allow us to get the children prop and we're going to go ahead and just render the children uh render the children uh node in between overlay so this is going to allow us to that uses dynamically with anything. So if I want to use this with literally anything, I could do that. 
I don't think it'd be wise to call it spinner because that means it, it would make the user think that it's limited to only the spinner. So I think it'd be better to call it something else, but we'll just leave this alone for now. Okay. Um, okay. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'm going to import bar loader, which comes from React Spinners right over here. And I'm going to do the size or color. Right. You can also change the size too, but here we go. There we go. We can see the bar loader there now. So if I visit any page, it's going to always show the spinner. Okay. Now, if there is an error, uh, or by error, I mean if the user is in fact not logged in, we should handle that. And how do we handle that? Well, well, if the user is not logged in, we know that this user will be this this user object will be uh, null. So we can actually just modify this, and we can just say if user and no error uh then rendered this out however if there what, what if there is a user but there is no error at all that would also be problematic but there should always but to be honest with you there will always be a user as long as the user is logged in okay um if there is an error that is returned from the server like a 500 or like a 502 that means something's wrong with the server itself the server is down but as long as the server is up, there's nothing wrong with the server. You're able to make the request to the API to get the user. If this is null, then it will just render this. If there's some error, which, like I said, most of the time the error is going to be a 403, which implies that the user will be undefined. Okay, because if 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 it's an error, then inside use fetch user, it will never set the state of user to an actual user. It will just set the error to an error. So that should, hopefully that makes sense, okay? So if I were to go into my cookies, clear this, you can see that it's going, if I refresh, it's gonna make that request, but you're gonna see that nothing gets rendered, okay? And in fact, what I wanna do is I actually want to redirect. So let me actually do that real quick. So handling redirects are a little bit tricky with uh, React Router version six. Uh, I did try a couple things that seemed to not work out the way that I expected. So for now, what we'll do, honestly, is I'm just going to do this. Um, I'll just do this. Route path uh, elements. For now, I'll just render uh, a not found for now until I can find a better solution. Um, but yeah. So the menu works if I try to go to this. Uh, whoops, not that. Let me go ahead and log out. Or not log out, but clear the cookie, aka the story session. And let's try to go to this route. You can see this is not found. So for now, we'll do that. I really want to find a way to kind of like redirect this back to the same page. But the reason why, so I could actually do a redirect by using the navigate class. Uh, that's coming from the React Router DOM package. But what happens is that because of the way that we are conditionally rendering all of this, um, initially users undefined. So I think what happens is it renders these routes first, right? So then user becomes defined, but then if it tries to visit these routes, it'll literally redirect back to this. That's what I tried when I tested it. So we're not going to worry about that for now, but it's okay. We'll just leave it alone like this for now. We could we could definitely do something like set a timeout. Like we could create a component, set a timeout, and make it so that after like five seconds, it'll redirect back home. Um, but it's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll just leave it like this for now, okay? Or instead of saying not found, um, we'll just say something like, oh, uh, you are not authorized or something like that. But... I don't want to put too much thought into it right now. This is, uh, as long as we have the routes protected, that's okay. That's all that matters. Okay. Uh, but I think the easiest thing to do is probably just uh, show the login page again. But I prefer, like I said, I would prefer to have the actual route go back to the uh, the home route. Okay. But uh, let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and uh start fetching some stuff from the back end so i think in the next video we're gonna go ahead and fetch uh start fetching the guild configuration but before we can fetch the guild configuration because it doesn't make sense to fetch that immediately because what we need to do next is we need to actually get the actual uh servers that the user's in 
right? So we need to, for example, get all of these servers. So what are the servers the users in and what permissions do they have for each server? So this is going to require a lot of work on the back end, which I'm really excited for. And essentially what's gonna happen is we're going to need to fetch an endpoint um, that's gonna give us all of the guilds. It's gonna give us all of the channels. And, um, and then when we click on these, and when you click on one of these, it'll fetch the guild configuration. So that's the major thing right now is we need to make sure we get all of the guilds. That is the most important thing right now. Okay. We cannot proceed if we don't get these guilds. So we're going to have to focus on getting the guilds. So that means in the next episode, we're going to work on the back end. And I'm going to show you how we can actually get the guilds that the user uh, that the user is in. Okay, because it's a little bit tricky, but I'll explain a little bit more about how that feature works. So I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace out.